post physique. Greetings, my esteemed subscribing tons. Welcome back to good old Paris. No, these streets don't seem to lead anywhere. There has to be an underground pass somewhere. We are actually in Paris in the fateful year of 1898. So you can see the Eiffel Tower and some like cool balloons. Area is becoming unstable. Oh. Turn back. You need to get underground. Now. Hurry. So basically we have to get underground, otherwise we will get cucked by uh, this um, thing. So um, yeah, I have had some good old motivation to make high thumos videos as of late. Feels good. I was actually supposed to make a Gain's Kitchen today, but I got mugged by the light. It uh, decided to get dark a bit earlier, which is of course the case in Sweden during autumn, so it shouldn't come as any surprise at all. But um, worry not, I do have a Gain's Kitchen incoming. I'll just have to make it a bit earlier in the day next time, so it will be a bulking recipe. Oh. Almost got run over by a train there. Uh, so yeah, a bulking recipe for um, those who want to bloat max. So we can have a bloat max physique when we post it. So anyway, speaking of uh, posting physiques and um, such matters, I just came back from the Temple of Iron. And... Uh, did some good old deadlifts. Always a um, joyous occasion. Actually, for the first time in my life, I did eight repetitions at 180 kg. Felt uh, felt good. I felt strong, and uh, I am actually loading up for a training, like a classic, almost Latsbra style training video uh, that I will record with my brother on Friday, actually. So I have uh, loaded up with some good sessions and uh, on Friday I will lift excruciatingly heavy and... Uh, oh, I'm gonna get run over now. Quickly now, run! Oh, alright. Oh, good times. Um, yeah, as I was saying before, I almost got run over by a train. I um, yeah, I will take a full scoop of Varulvsbrygd Werewolf Brew, my uh, pre-workout product, the greatest pre-workout of all time. Actually, I um, think that will be the verdict of all who try it. Um, And uh, yeah, I will load up, eat a lot, load max bulk, and then have a good old session doing some squats and deadlifts, I think. Comment below what you uh, like most in, in videos, in training motivation videos. A bit of both, or mainly deadlifts, or mainly squats. I think there is something primal and uh, testosteroneous about deadlifts. It's um, a pure and high testosterone exercise. Of course, squats is also a um, uh, highly testosterone exercise. It looks like you'll have to climb Lady Liberty. She must have bled but, her from um, the But yeah, there is something special with uh, the deadlifts. Lady Liberty. Hmm. Aha! Okay. We have to go around here, I suppose. Boom. What an epic scene! Boom. Alright, quite an epic scene, I must say. Oh, and look at that view. I think this is 
because some higher powers wants me to reach a hundred thousand subscribers. Now, that being said, I have heard. And we're back. Not everyone is so fortunate their first time through a bridge. Sometimes our initiates are trapped in the system and we have no choice but to send someone like you in to rescue them. In fact, one of our initiates is caught in a Bellapox server right now. If you're not too exhausted, you can re-enter the bridge and rescue him. All right, back to work, initiate. All right. Um cool. Yes, as I was saying, I have some good authority. Uh, a good friend just told me earlier today that he has uh, been unsubscribed from uh, the channel. Uh, he noted that when he uh, saw my last video. And it's not the first time I hear that. It's uh, yeah, quite common that guys say it. But, you know, it is what it is. You just have to look at the bright side of life. Look at the possibilities to admire the aesthetics of uh, our protagonist here. Kill the criminals. Okay. <laughs> Bloody conservative. Okay, who are... Aha, these are the uh, revolutionaries. These are the leftists. We must illuminate them. Oh, wait. I was a bit rusty there. I haven't played in a little while. Um, okay, come at me, brew. Hello, mate. Well, he's not my mate, but, uh, but anyway. There is sort of the epic tie boxing move, also. Now, where was I? I always seem to get interrupted when I make these videos. So anyway, as I said, I've had, um, yeah, a good few Laddingtons say that, um... They've been unsubscribed, but uh, yeah, it's an unfortunate thing, but uh, it is what it is. Now we have to swim over this uh, fine river and get back to the epic place. So anyway, I was listening to the Bronze Age mindset, the Bronze Age pervert podcast. I have signed up for a year's subscription because I do believe it is a very good and motivating podcast and um, it's good to support our own content creators and uh, yeah I listen to it in between sets in the gym and it gives me motivation and good insights. Parishioners found a body in Notre Dame today. The wags are already calling him the penitent. I take it justice has been done? Not entirely. Siver had an accomplice the night of Monsieur de la Serre's murder. He struck the killing blow. This raises troubling questions. What have you learned? He was working with a man called Le Roi des Tsunes. The King of Beggars? Are you sure? You know him. Of him. The beggars pay him tribute. The man himself is a ghost. We've sent three assassins after him. The first two found no trace. The third never returned. I can find him. Siver met with one of his lieutenants. I owe it to the memory of Monsieur de la Serre to uncover the truth. Perhaps you can at that. You've proved yourself a true assassin today. And a true assassin must have the proper tools. So the concealed blade and the smoke bombs were just what you had on hand, then? The Phantom Blade. A modest little update from the traditional Assassin's Blade. Where you're going, you may not wish to get too close to your enemies. Now then. Assassin, this council charges you to go to La Cour des Miracles. Find there the Templar agent, Le Roi des Thunes. Learn his secrets. And bring him peace. We must bring this guy peace. Anyway, as I was saying in this episode, episode 9, I listened to it. Um, it's about the Joker movie. 
which I haven't seen yet. It's um, it's the life of a married man with a little child. Now, of course, you can always solve those sort of things with a babysitter, etc. But um, it's a bit harder to just uh, go to the cinema um, whenever you want right. like that. I but um, I don't know. I might do it at some stage anyway. Um, because it is a culturally important film. I might be a bit late on commenting it, so I might skip it as well. Who knows, I will see. But Bronze Age Pervert mentioned something interesting in the podcast in um, when he talks about what he would rather see kind of movies. And he said, Jason and the Argonauts, but in space. And of course, it reminded me a bit, no, not a bit, wrong word I used there. It reminded me a lot of Horus Heresy or 40k uh, Warhammer and because you have similar themes in that setting. A band of brothers out in search of powerful artifacts. So um, yeah speaking of books etc. We'll um, Make some sort of book review on uh, the Horus Heresy, or a quote review actually, because there are about three different quotes from different Horus Heresy books that I have on my page, thegoldenman.se, that I will probably read out and uh, talk a bit about, because they are so motivating. Um, so that is something I might do, and I held a little vote on my telegram page if you saw that about if you are familiar with um, Warhammer or not so there is basically Warhammer Fantasy if you have seen me play Warhammer, to Warhammer Total War that is set in fantasy setting so it's yeah uh, fantasy with elves and orcs and dwarves and knights and uh, that sort of stuff then you also have Warhammer 40k and the Horus Heresy can be said to be 30k so it is um, a thousand years before the 40k setting and that is basically science fiction where you have genetically modified demigods and uh, and soldiers etc so uh, yeah an interesting setting for sure so, in my humble opinion, at least, I think Warhammer Fantasy, for me, has, has always been the successor of Tolkien's work. It's because it was the fantasy setting I went to after seeing the films and reading the books. So, basically, I saw the first Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, and then I read all the books in the meantime until the second film came out. Uh, had a huge impact on me when I was um, at that age. found it highly inspiring and motivating and of course still does. Now let's see what the crack is in this rather dodgy part of town I suppose. The Kingdom of Beggars. Let's do it lads. I do believe that there is a lot of degeneracy going on here. But we are here as the champion of order to bring these people to the light of the Emperor. Speaking of the Emperor, Napoleon, we'll actually meet him later in the game. Uh, so, anyway, concluding my little monologue on Warhammer, I will make lore videos about both fantasy and Horus Heresy at a later opportunity, but I just thought to mention it here in um, this Let's Play because I was inspired since I heard Jason and the Argonauts, but in space. So speaking about the Joker, of course in Batman, he's one of the greatest villains of all time. 
I am a great fan of Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Hey, <laughs> you horse him. Okay, we need to hide from this uh, degenerates. We have to investigate the area. Uh, now we have left the area. That was uh, silly of me. I suppose we'll have to go in again in this degenerate hellhole. But it must be done. It must be done for the good of the French kingdom. Tackle the thief. Not now, though. We are on a secret mission here. Let's see what is going on. Let's see if we can. Aha! I have spotted someone over there. Go on, jump down. Now we need to blend in here. There we are. give more money to crippled beggars than whole ones. Le Roi des Thunes sees in that bit of trivia an opportunity to motivate his less successful employees. That man has lost a foot. Now you can charge in there, cause a great disturbance, and send all the rats scurrying back to their holes. Or you can disappear into the swarm and follow the rats back to their king. Either way, that man has lost a foot. It's done. <laughs> Take him to the clinic. Very true, and that guy looked like a, um, not only a degenerate, but a connoisseur of all manner of degeneracy. Not yet. This guy. Who are you, precisely? And why help me? Oh, I've had my eye on you for some time, now. I feel it my sovereign duty to aid all those who suffered in cruelest bondage with me at the Bastille. And I have a vested interest in seeing the King of Rats caught in a trap. As to my name, I have the pleasure of being Donatien Alphonse François, Marquis de Sade. Do pay me a visit. When you've tired of chasing vermin. <laughs> I will be sure to uh, do it. He's left a lovely trail. <laughs> that man is an um, acolyte of Slanesh. Slanesh being the god of excess and debauchery in, well, both Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k. So I do believe that we will leave this episode here. So this is a nice, short, comfy autumn gaming session and we'll pick up here the next time. So thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day. XOXO, boo!